this section is about the nature of suffering so in suffering again the nature there are two types first thing is we need to partake in christ suffering and second thing is we need to suffer for christ in christ we should suffer for christ we should suffer acts 94 failing to the ground he heard he heard a voice saying to him saul saul why are you persecuting me you all might know the scriptures this is the context of saul when he was persecuting the church in acts when he was pulling out all the believers who accepted the lord jesus christ he was killing them he took the command from high priest and he was persecuting the believers then what did jesus say paul was persecuting the believers believers were facing suffering then jesus is telling these believers are partaking in my suffering saul why are you persecuting me means when people persecute you you are partaking in the suffering of lord jesus christ because christ is getting suffered when we are getting persecuted right so there is a partaking of suffering along with jesus christ we also see in first peter 4 12 to 13 beloved do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange were happen to you but rejoice in so far as you share christ suffering rejoice when you share christ suffering it is not me who is telling it i said suffering in christ suffering for christ i am speaking on behalf of suffering in christ so you clearly see in verse 13 that you are supposed to share the suffering in christ that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed so when you partake in his suffering at the second coming of lord jesus christ you will be part of his glory which he is going to reveal at his second coming romans 8 16 to 18 the spirit himself bears witness with our spirits that we are children of god and in if children then legal heirs heirs of god and fellow heirs with christ provided see the see the grammar here provided we suffer so what paul is telling here is you will be called the children of god provided you share in the suffering of lord jesus christ the second part of it suffering for christ acts 9 15 16 but the lord said to him go for he is chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the gentiles and the kings and the children of israel while i will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name so this is the context of the cornelius when god was should telling cornelius to go and pray to paul because he was blinded when he faced the lord jesus christ in acts 8 when he was just trying to persecute the church then cornelius will tell oh god you are telling me to go and uh, pray to the person who was persecuting all the jewish people jewish community in the entire jerusalem the one who stoned uh, stephen to death you are asking me to go and pray to him then god is telling go because he must suffer for my sake are you seeing suffering for christ till now we saw suffering in christ now we are seeing suffering for christ okay move on philippians 3 9 to 11 So Paul is writing here and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law but what which comes through the faith in Jesus Christ the righteousness from God that depends upon the faith that I may know him and the power of the resurrection and may share his suffering becoming like him in his death that by any means possible I attain the resurrection from the dead so paul want to understand what jesus has gone through all jesus power jesus resurrection paul want to understand so that paul also want to f- follow 
the same steps of the suffering what Jesus has gone through. We saw in 1 Peter 2.21, right? You are called to suffer. The calling, God has chosen you for the purpose of suffering. So that you are an example for other people and follow Jesus' steps. So here Paul also is trying to follow the steps of Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul wants to understand the power of Jesus' resurrection. Paul wants to understand the suffering of Lord Jesus Christ so that he can also follow his steps. Clearly you see this, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection and may share his suffering because like him in his death. Paul wants to face the death, the death how Jesus faced, like similarly Paul also wants to face his death as well. That is the reason he goes on to tell in Philippians 1.21 to live is Christ or to die is gain. We know this famous scripture, right? What it means is Paul is telling, if I live, I live for Christ. Die, it is gain for me that I go and live with the Lord Jesus Christ at his home in heaven. So I'm okay anything. If I die, I'm with Jesus Christ. But if I am living, I live for Christ. I live for Christ by imitating like Christ. So that is what is Paul telling. So what is our life? Are we living for Christ? Are we living in the suffering of Christ? Or are we enjoying the pleasures of this world by only caring about my job, my wealth, my family, my children? You need to understand when God created the mankind, there was no concept of self. Why do you think the scripture said in Mark chapter 8, deny to self and follow me? If you read the scriptures in Colossians 2.15, you will see you are created by God and for God. Means there is no concept of I in a believer's life. It is all Christ. The life of a believer is a Christ-centered life, not a self-centered life. You need to understand that. But the problem is because of the sin, because we still have Adam's nature in us, we struggle, we battle, and we don't live according to the purpose of how he created us to live, and we live according to the flesh. In everything, if we do something, we again look back, what is in it for me? The next section, suffering is to build faith for you. James 1 verse 2 and 3, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. So I said, Suffering, the, another purpose of suffering is to build the faith, strengthen your faith. Are you not seeing here in the verse 3 that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness? Means you will not fall in faith when you are tested in suffering, when you are tested in your trials. So through suffering, you are growing in faith. But how will it be when you say, when sufferings are coming, you praying, God take this suffering away from me. In fact, you should pray, God allow suffering and trials in my life that I may grow in faith. We pray totally converse. Next, Hebrew 12, 10 and 11. Hebrew, in Hebrew you see, for they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good. So God also disciplined his believers. Punishment, trials, sufferings. God disciplines people, those whom God loves actually. So why does he discipline? That we may share his holiness. So through discipline, you are getting sanctified. You are growing in holiness. You are growing in faith. It is not me who is telling it. It is the scripture which is telling. Through suffering, you share the holiness of God. For the moment all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Means through suffering, you need to grow in righteousness. You should be trained. You see the scripture is telling, again the grammar is important, that the peaceful fruit of the righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Means through suffering, through trials, you grow in holiness and you, are, you ought to also grow in the righteousness. Romans 5, uh, 3 and 4. 
not only that we but we rejoice in our suffering knowing that the suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope you see through suffering you are growing in faith what is endurance means you are not falling in your faith you are not being anxious in suffering in trials so through suffering you are enduring the pain you are enduring the suffering so through that suffering you are building your character your character is a testimony when people are looking at you the life what you tend to live and then character produces hope the hope which we all await for the hope of the resurrection of we as well at the second coming of lord jesus christ second corinthians 189 for we do not want you to be unaware brothers of the afflictions we experienced in asia for we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself indeed we left that we had received the sentence of death but that that was to make us rely not on ourselves but the god who raised that you clearly see here as well that paul is telling very clearly that i told you before itself you are going to be persecuted you are going to be persecuted but through persecution you will be strengthened in your faith we were persecuted we thought we had a death sentence to that extent we were persecuted the next type is the suffering for eternal glory here second corinthians 417 for this light mo- momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all compassion means through this suffering god is preparing you your wages through suffering in heaven which is your eternal glory so we see this we see here as well where paul is writing in romans 8 18 as well for i consider that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy comparing with the glory that is going to be revealed to us so means whatever you are going to face on this earth is not at all worthy it is not at all comparable to the glory what you are going to receive when you meet lord jesus christ means negligible to the glory what you are going to receive when you meet lord jesus christ the suffering is negligible so what an encouragement it is when you see this matthew's also blessed are you when you often revive you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account again here suffering for christ rejoice and be glad for your for your reward is great in heaven so when you face suffering your reward is there in heaven if you say you don't want suffering you're saying god i'm happy here with whatever blessings you have given me materialistic blessings in this world i'm happy i'll be here another section suffering is to encourage others philippians 1 to 12 14 i want you to know brothers that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so because of the suffering what paul is telling is the gospel has even spread more so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest of that my imprisonment is for christ and most of the brothers have become confident in the lord in to my imprisonment and must and much more bold to speak the word of god without fear so we see here because of the suffering the gospel was even spreaded more <laughs>